Okay, I'm going to go ahead and discuss what we are doing at Byron High School. And Byron High School is focused on maximizing learning for all. We're a 9-12 high school. We have about 530 students in our 9-12. through 12. We are the 2010 recipient of the National Blue Ribbon Award for high test scores. We were one of 23 traditional public high schools in the nation to receive this award. This last fall in September 2011, we received the Distinguished Intel School of Distinction winner for high school mathematics. Intel is looking for innovative math and science curriculums that can easily be replicated across the country. So I want to be talking about uh, the flipped classroom and uh, how we got there and what the flipped classroom looks like. But I want to first of all talk to you about how education is changing. Education is a two-step process, transferring the information and then assimilating that information. We need to help students assimilate that information after now information is everywhere with the internet and all the videos being online. Uh, many educators, he's referring to educators here, are threatened by the use of modern technology and for their job security. But we need to realize that our role as educators is changing and changing for the better from being the source of information to being the guide on how to use that information. The whole dynamics of learning is changing. It used to be for learning to occur. You had somebody standing in front of the classroom dispensing information. Maybe they cared if the students picked up on that information. Maybe they didn't. But the students had a one time shot to be able to get that information if they spaced out for a little bit or didn't follow what he was saying, they were pretty much done for. However, the whole dynamics of learning is changing. With the use of all the videos being online and the internet, students are able to learn how and when they want versus being locked into that one person dispensing information at the front of the classroom. Now, I want to talk about how we got to where we were implementing the flipped classroom. In 2010, we had implemented this idea of bidding adieu to textbooks where we developed our own curriculum without using any textbooks and since we knew we had no textbooks we knew we needed to have our videos being online to support our students and our parents when they were not in school. We developed a class Moodle site for every um, course which lists the essential learner outcomes which is based on our state standards, has our own teacher created videos, links to our homework and our homework solutions and then links to other interactive material to help our students learn. Learning is truly occurring 24-7. Through looking at our Moodle reports and surveying our students, we have found that the vast majority of our students, more than 90%, are accessing the class Moodle site in the evenings, after school, and weekends. Well, having all of our videos online that we had done for our textbook free curriculum made it very easy for us to implement the whole idea of the flipped classroom in which students watch and learn the material at home and then they come to class where they have class time to be able to work on the math problems and ask questions from the teacher and other students and get help from them. Versus in a traditional classroom where students would listen to the teacher do the math on the board, maybe have time to do one or two easy problems in class and then they would go home and have a lot of time at home to work. However, they'd have no resources and often would get frustrated. Now, one of the things that I like about the flipped classroom is in a traditional lecture, I, the teacher, am standing at my smart board. I am actively doing math. My students are passively sitting there watching me do the math. In the flipped classroom, students are at their desks actively doing the math. In a science room, you can actually implement more labs. In other rooms, you, or subject areas, you can have students be doing more of that subject area. It's common for my students to be one to even five days ahead of other students in class. Now, when students work ahead, we still have paper pencil tests that we give in class. Um, and so then they become peer tutors and or work in other homework as long as they're not being a distraction. I'm fine with them working ahead. Now, when it comes to the flipped classroom, 
we have our students who are coming into our room. They're really at all different levels. There might be a geometry classroom, but they're really at all different levels of understanding of geometry and the whole idea of mathematics. The flipped classroom really allows you to differentiate and meet the students where they are at and work one-on-one -on -one with them. I have nice straight rows in my room going forwards and backwards, but the students come in and rearrange the desks so that it works best for them. Now, our high flyers, they love the flipped classroom. They no longer have to sit through that boring lecture. So that's a, kind of a no-brainer for them. When you're dealing with your middle-level students, They've been doing okay with lecture. If you go to the flipped classroom, they're going to have a learning curve to get used to the new format, but once they're used to it, the more than likely embrace it. For our lower level students, they're struggling with lecture. A lot of them struggle because they don't do anything from the time they leave school till the time they come back to school. In the flipped classroom, they might struggle some too, but it gives you more time to be able to work with those struggling students. And even if they don't watch the video outside of class because they refuse to do any schoolwork outside of school, you can have them pull out a smartphone or iPod Touch or log on to a computer in the back of the room and watch the video. And our videos are a lot shorter than our traditional lectures, so they still have the vast majority of class time to work on, um, work on the homework. Now, the whole idea of the flipped classroom was started by Aaron Sams and John Bergman from Colorado, two chemistry teachers. So we were not necessarily the first ones to do this, but a lot of people have been asking us questions. So that's why I'm doing this video. Now, I want to show you this slide here. It's talking about our videos. Now. The blue is our five-year test history average for one class where we were using the same videos beforehand and afterwards of when we put the videos online and digital content online. The red is our test history average after having taught the course three times where they have access to the videos and the solutions manual being online. I, both times this was taught with, or the blue and the red are both taught with lecture. So it's really comparing the idea of having access to the videos. It does make a difference. And here we're comparing test history average. Now, does a flipped classroom actually make a difference? Well, in my opinion, yes. The students embrace, this, embrace it. They like it. They want it. But also, here we're looking at test proficiency, the number of students that are proficient on any one test. Proficiency, we define as the number of students that are at 80% or above in any one given test. So, in Chapter 2 here, by the way, Chapter 1 was out of here because it was taught with uh, lecture both times, and Chapter 3 was taught with um, the flip classroom both times. However, I did just go ahead and finish my test yesterday on Chapter 1 doing the flipped, and it was just as high in my proficiency as it was with the lecture. Now here in chapter two, the flip did significantly better. Also in chapter five and on the final, we did better. Chapter four, we did a little bit less, but I know chapter four is extremely hard material, so I may have to go ahead and change my approach a little bit when I do it this next time. I may have to do a little bit of in-class instruction on the best approaches on some of the harder problems. What I like here is the number of A's and B's. That's the number of students or percent of students that are at 80% or above. With the flipped classroom, you see it's significantly higher than it is for lecture. Over here, we're about the same. Over here, we're about the same. Chapter 7 here, we're down. But I know that was a Monday test after a nice long weekend. Probably not the best time to give my test. So does the flipped classroom work? I think it does. Is it necessarily the silver bullet and the best thing that works all the time? No. There may be times where lecture is more appropriate, but by far the flipped classroom works a lot. What you're looking at here is our grade distribution in Algebra 1. This is from first quarter. We had all A's, B's, and C's. From second quarter, this is the last half of our course because we're on a block schedule, so we cover a whole course in one quarter. Once again, all A's, B's, and C's. 
The teacher teaching this course has never had a class where he's never had D's and F's. The only thing he can contribute it to is the whole idea of the flipped classroom. January 19, 2012, CNN did an article on the flipped classroom from about Clintondale High School um, in Michigan. It's a financially challenged area near Detroit. Principal says the attendance rates have increased, our disciplinary rates are decreased, and our student failure rate is dropped by 33% in one year after implementing the whole idea of the flipped classroom. We're always striving to continue to improve what we're doing. We often start our classes with a Q&A so on questions from the video to try to see what was going on. Some student or teachers like to go ahead and do a mini lesson, but I discourage you from doing that because if you talk for more than four minutes, it takes away all the motivation the students have to be able to watch that video ahead of time. To be able to improve our efficiency in, in class, we're looking at implementing our Moodle quizzes, having students watch the video and then take a Moodle quiz right after that so we have a snapshot when they come in on where the students are as a whole, whole and as individuals so that we can meet those misunderstandings. We are now implementing the whole idea of the smart responders which handle mathematically correct notation with fractions, exponents, and roots and has an intelligent grading system and we're using this in our classes to be able to have our students check their understanding partway through class. Um, because with the flipped classroom there's a lot of collaborative work that happens. So partway through class we give a short four to five question quiz on these responders where they have to go and work by themselves lets you know where each student truly is by themselves. With the flipped classroom you also have extra time. What are you going to do with that extra time? Could be more hands-on projects, more application projects. Um, could be having the students actually create something and use their knowledge. Let's talk a little bit about the philosophy of our videos. Uh, we put all of our videos on YouTube um, and then we embed them in our class Moodle site so that students aren't actually getting distracted by the videos that are come up on YouTube. We use Smartboard uh, software to record all of our lessons, but you could also use Jing or Screencast-O-Matic. We also use the Smart Wireless Slates so that we can record sitting at our desk or um, sitting at our kitchen table at home. Now, when we record, we do not record in class with our students because we do not want student names and comments in our videos. Plus, we don't give our students think time. We go straight through the lesson because when they watch it, they can always just pause and rewind. On the left here, you'll see my videos where I have all my notes typed out and I uncover the notes from boxes over the top as I go through the video. Sometimes I use my wireless slate to be able to write in stuff that doesn't necessarily type nicely. And that works great with your upper level students. With your lower level students, they need to actually see the teacher write the material out, either on the board or the slate. That whole process just helps those students. With a smart recorder, it's very easy. You just click down here, pull up the smart recorder. It brings up this right here. If you want, you could just click the red X and you'd be recording right away. Um, you could also go ahead and change some of the options if you wanted, but the smart recorder is extremely easy to use. Now most adults look at this right here and they see a cell phone, but it's really a small part. Students see it and it's their connection to the world. It's how they send and receive information. It's how they learn. I would encourage you to use smartphones, iPods, iPads in your classroom so that students can make the use of their time. Now keep in mind, one size does not fit all. How it looks here at Byron High School is going to be different than how it looks in your school. How it looks in a math classroom is going to be different than how it looks in an English room or a science room. How it looks at a fifth grade level is going to be different than how it looks in my calculus level here, which is also different than how it looks at the college level. The flip classroom has been done from what I have heard from fifth grade all the way into different college classes. Thank you for your time.